live in New York City. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the city from the noise. We are here for Strata Hadoop coverage for our special Big Data NYC event, live on the ground, like for the Today Show with the windows behind us, and literally right around the corner from the Javits, literally 100 yards away, is where all the action's happening. It's part of the Big Data NYC uh, event this week, and I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, kicking off second segment of our kickoff with special host, analyst, guest, CEO of Chiseida, Avi Mehta, CUBE alum, six years in a row. Six years in a row. We've been on the CUBE, we've been at Hadoop World, now called Strata Hadoop, for six years. This is our sixth year covering Strata Hadoop. I've Welcome back, it's one a, of it's our quite first a streak. and best guests. It's, uh, thank you so much, it's quite a streak, and I guess I got a promotion, I'm now Guest host, co-host, I mean, I, I could never, uh, my it's father will be very pleased that yeah. you've, you've made me equal to the two Guest of analysts. It's like right, the, yeah. you know, ESPN <laughs> brings the coaches on that are successful <laughs> Super Bowl champions, uh, and you are a CEO, so you're in the trenches. We want to get your perspective as someone who's building a company, profitable company, Trisade have been on many times, but you're out in the trenches, you're out doing business, you are part of the ecosystem, you're part of this fabric of the big data business. What's happening, what's new, and what's different this year? What's different, um, I think the three of us need to create the difference. Uh, we, we need to change the conversation. The conversation needs to dramatically go from this obsession with technology, uh, which of course we come from the tech industry, so it's good to be obsessed with technology, to really understanding something that we haven't uh, changed our perspective on individually and as, uh, as a company in my case, but even having spoken to you before, that the future truly belongs to how technology is enabling the next generation business model. And uh, I am uh, now on a new mission to make sure the conversation actually changes. We cannot keep talking about um, or missing the point on this revolution. What it's enabling is a automation system, a automation ecosystem that can take human tasks that needs you know, brain power, intelligence, yeah and deliver decision systems at scale. And I hope, uh, John, to answer your question specifically, I hope that starting with Big Data NYC, as we go into 2016, the conversation changes into a new alphabet. I have yeah. a new alphabet for you, right? The ABCD uh, of, uh, of uh, in our Big Data ecosystem should be analytics, big data, cloud, and decision sciences. It's no longer about the data, the it's ABCDs about decisions. The ABCDs of business. ABCDs of business. So I got to ask you, okay, so it's one of the things that we're seeing, at least I'm seeing over the past six years, is certainly looking at cloud, the 70 events that we covered this year in theCUBE. Mm -hmm. You're seeing that the, it's almost like a train wreck in the ecosystem right now, and to my standpoint. You're seeing way too much pressure coming from the business side, customers, mm -hmm. who want scalable, large-scale solutions. And it's as if the Hadoop ecosystem has just been slowly patching, moving incrementally along, adding features, even Hadoop uh, leader, Cloudera, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. throwing a haymaker out there, it's a, it feels like a Hail Mary, throwing out storage, I mean, it just seems so late to the game mm -hmm. when there's so much demand for solutions. Yes. Do you see that same thing? What And what does that do to the ecosystem? Does it force vendors to make uh, medieval acts and do things <laughs> crazy? Or does it force the big guys like EMC and IBM and Oracle to come in and say, hey, you know what, we can fill a big gap here, we're used to the large scale. That's a real interesting dynamic. You're seeing IBM dominating. You're seeing Oracle you know, spamming the event out there mm -hmm. with taxis and billboards. So mm -hmm. what's your take? I fundamentally believe that the infrastructure story that both has sailed, you know? It sailed when Oracle won the America's Cup and, uh, <laughs> and we, <laughs> we spoke about mm -hmm. that uh, a while ago. Um, the obsession with growth is, ca is causing this turmoil in the ecosystem. It is my take on why you see this uh, uh, this uh, medieval, what do you call the medieval bloodbath. Uh, it is almost regressive to believe that we, in six years, six continuous uh, years of covering uh, what we have always said is a business revolution, right? We were the first ones to say, this is a trillion dollar ecosystem, not a billion dollar ecosystem. Mike Olson, a good friend of yours, a good friend of mine, came out and said the last year, right? This is a, a trillion dollar value generation ecosystem. The reason the confusion is being caused is going from raw data to actionable intelligence is hard. It's hard if the only focus we have in our conversations is tech-driven. If we keep worrying about you know, uh, 
backwards integration and not forward integration. So to your point, why are we talking about storage now and not you know, uh, analytical applications, tool sets? The reason being without a deep knowledge of the particular domain, yep. we call them data domains, it's very hard to have the conversation. So when you, are, when you, have, these, when you have these massive valuations, John, and you guys know yep. it, when you have these massive valuations, and the only way to fill into it is growth, yeah. you go and try to sell the easiest and lowest common denominator, which is, in this case, storage. storage. Dave, <laughs> Dave, not so, not on, going and solving gotta, business I gotta, problems. I gotta ask Dave a question, because this is coming in back down, because that was a good thread. The, the fact of the matter is, adoption is slowly, is not, be, is not there for Hadoop. Merv Adrian put out some Gartner data this morning. Big adoption trends, steady increase in investments in pilots. I mean, that's just code word for saying slow, and then he says slow production growth. Dave, Hadoop is not moving into production as fast as it could be. What's your take? Well, on it's it? hard. Is it, I mean, is it a bigger data, TAM? Is it a small? Uh, is it a slice of a bigger TAM? What's your take? I mean, our data shows sixty percent of organizations are doing something with Hadoop, mm -hmm. and you know, a decent size, mm -hmm. a decent number of those are in in production. But the problem is that you said it best last year. Uh, the ROI has been reduction on investment. The, most people have not gotten the return mm -hmm. that they wanted to get, and they're struggling through that. Mm -hmm. But I want to break down your alphabet, if we can. So the, the, the ABCs, the analytics of big data and the cloud, it seems to me, we talked about this five years ago, six years ago, we talked about the new business models, we yes. talked about the paradigm shift. Yes. It seems like organizations got to be focused on two things. One is the ability to, to capture all this data, ingest it, analyze it in real time, and affect the business outcome. But the Correct. other piece is your domain expertise and your decision science to continuously improve my ability to compete, to differentiate, to yes. add value. Yes. And that's where the decision science comes in. So you got sort Absolutely. of the infrastructure piece, which is the hardcore tech, and we sort of checked that box, and we're still <laughs> trying to figure that out, but Absolutely. it's complex. But I wonder if you could talk about that a little bit. Where should organizations be investing? Would love to, and I, I would love to get your feedback too, because you talk so much to the tech ecosystem, and you always push my thinking. I will give you the business perspective. Uh, we, have, we are yet to meet a CEO, and to say that this year is going to expand into healthcare in banking, retail, and healthcare, who does not believe that the next frontier is taking complex decision sciences that have till now been human, because you, know, you need a person as smart as Dave Vellante or John Furrier to extract a signal from the noise. The signal from the noise, as you build your platform out, should be automated. The automation of decision science is the next frontier. Not one CEO, Dave, to answer your question that we have spoken to will disagree that the ability to run organizations that are 300,000 people large, which is the average organization size of a large bank, by the way. Yeah. A large bank globally has 300,000 employees. There is no way you can compete in a capital and resource efficient manner unless you've automated what we earlier called six years the data factory, or what's now called the data pipeline. So the ability, so what is the challenge? The challenge is, no one has been able to go talk to those CEOs and have a conversation to explain to them how will you automate the decision systems. And that is where the secret sauce comes in, right? You, you, and you know it, is the combination of deep domain knowledge with the ability, the platform, I completely agree with you and John, the platform for massively parallel computations, AKA the ability to, beat, to build and monetize cheap supercomputers is done. Whether it's in memory, off yeah. memory, store, it doesn't here's, matter. Here's, the platform's done, the solutions, your word, the solutions don't exist. Yeah, so and that's where it comes to say that the reason why we are profitable, we walk in and don't, we have to stop selling Hadoop. Yeah. And we need to start s selling anti-money laundering, uh, and massively drug resistant organization, uh, organism uh, health outcomes, and next best offer engines I, for retail. I think, I think That's the difference. I think the big thing that we're seeing, and Dave, Dave, Dave hit on this the last time he did the MIT event, we're talking to uh, um, uh, Bob Picciano at IBM, which is, and I said on theCUBE, that um, there's going to be diversity. There's going to be mm -hmm. um, diversity in the, in the infrastructure and software market where the religions don't matter. And the two religions <laughs> that we're watching are horizontally scalable mm -hmm. with commodity hardware and vertically integrated. Like it, so, love it. So scale up, scale yes. out is concepts that we all know. Here's what I see, and the trend that's disrupting this ecosystem here, and I think it's kind of catching everybody flat-footed. If you look at Cloudera, what yes. they're doing is obvious, got them flat-footed and others, is that they're betting on one religion or the other. And cu every customer I talk to wants both scale out Excellent and point. scale up. Software and big data, if it's not prepackaged software, you brought this up with Bob Picciano, which is 
big data is about integration. Absolutely. Not about silos. So Absolutely. That is a huge issue, David. Just yeah, a huge opportunity, Excellent point. right? I mean, it's, it's bringing that integration to the application world, and we've always said there's a lack of real application solutions in this space. And, and to add to your question of diversity, you know, the thing I miss is there were these early vagabonds. They've all come through, you know, the Vikings of, of, our, of this revolution, right? <laughs> uh, they've all come and crossed the path of, uh, uh, at, at the cube. And those voices are missed. We have to celebrate different voices. Not to mention, yeah. one of the smart, uh, and the voices, I mean, are the jo Jeff, I miss the fact that Jeff Hammerbacher, Kevin Wheel, mm -hmm. and the CEO of, I mean, the head of product at Twitter, maybe future CEO at Twitter, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, we all, but they were the same, I think myself, Jeff, and Kevin spoke at theCUBE six years ago yeah. yes. at Hadoop World. Right. And those voices that were not worried about Jeff Hammerbacher has one of my all-time favorite quotes, which is the smartest minds of, the ge of our generation are making people click on ads. There are other well, bigger problems ad, to solve. Now they have the ad blocker software. So no, they have the ad blocker. Finally, the content you know, is going out of business. Exactly, so I think that to <laughs> your to, iOS 9. <laughs> to take from your point on diversity, one of the smartest advertising campaigns on big data was created before big data, the term yeah. was coined. It was called Smarter Planet by IBM. And I have seen the, um, having been on both sides, as you know, been a customer of you know, large tech companies and now selling my own solutions, the ability to make the planet smarter, now that IBM has abandoned that marketing, I guess I can use it. The ability to make the planet smarter with seven billion people, ah, how many devices now? 14 billion devices and IoT, all these buzzwords yeah. will fail when if you keep worrying about the internet of things, if you keep worrying about the network and not the signal from the network, we will fail. The ability to take data at scale, I love your T model, the horizontal scalability and the vertical yeah. expertise, the vertical focus. They're not focus, mutually exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive. Yeah. And the ability to integrate them, you know, very key word, the integrate the ABCs, analytics, big data, and cloud. Integrate that in a solution. And not for, not for infrastructure, and deliver decision science. I think a key word we have to add to our vocabulary yes. is decision science. We always joke on theCUBE, everything's going back to the old IT days. Information processing, data processing, <laughs> decision support. I mean, this is, we're back to the old days. We right? are. We're back to the old and, you know, and we should be ashamed as an industry. I, f I am, I am my, my worst days in the industry are when we create terms like the hub or the warehouse. Those were, I mean, it tells me that we as a human race, we as a technology ecosystem, aren't smart or creative enough to come up with the right ideas. It's absurd to Data think. Data Lake. <laughs> it's absurd to think, and I know you don't like the term Actually, either. Actually, Cloudera put in their press release fast data, which I coined on the cube yeah. actually years it, it, ago. It's, but it's absurd to Sapphire. think. Sapphire, 2011. <laughs> it's absurd Obby. to think, it's absurd to think that we will create data hubs, lakes, you know, Big data will be successful we gotta, we gotta, when we, it democratizes, democratizes the access to data, not centralizes we, it. We gotta, break, we gotta break now, because we got work over our time, but I want to get a quick bumper sticker for both of you guys. What do we expect to see at the end of this show of Big Data NYC and Hadoop World? What do you expect to see at the end of this event? What's going to happen? I think what will happen is uh, you guys will be asking some very tough questions to people around what does the maturation look like, but more importantly, what is the roadmap when intelligence gets automated? That's what I expect the two of you to do. Yeah, I think we're entering the era of confusion, and those leaders that can help us squint through that are going to be the winners. Confusion, of course, uh, not a problem for theCUBE. We extract the signal from the noise. That's what we do. We're here live all week here in New York City. We'll be right back with more after this short break, live for Big Data NYC, part of Strata Hadoop. We'll be right back after this short break.